Hey everyone, you know, ever since humans began building ships thousands of years ago, shipwrecks have inevitably happened. And while some of these sunken ships may have been lost to time and the shifting oceans and sands, there are still those that are intact and visited by researchers, historians, divers, and treasure hunters to this day. So join me for today's video. We're going to take a look at 15 of the most amazing sunken ships. Number 15. HMS Vixen Built in England in 1864, then launched to sea three years later, the HMS Vixen was a behemoth gunboat whose hull was completely covered in teak wood, which is popular on today's boats. Supposedly, the boat was the slowest ironclad vessel in the Royal Navy. Now, whether or not that's true really doesn't matter, just the outcome, because after sea trials, Vixen and her sister, Viper, were considered too slow and were therefore deemed unseaworthy. Both vessels were towed to Bermuda in the year 1888 to serve as defense ships, but by 1896, the ship's machinery and engines had all been removed, and Vixen was used to block a narrow channel off Daniels Bay to prevent torpedo attacks. And in the process, friendly boats were also shooed away. The Vixen certainly lived an interesting life, despite being unable to keep up with her peers. Today, the bow of HMS Vixen sticks out of the gorgeous blue waters it's submerged in. It's now a protected wreck, meaning you need to get a permit to scuba dive or take anything from inside. Though snorkeling is always allowed, and glass-bottom boat tours also frequent the site. So, perhaps the Vixen wasn't a waste seeing as how she serves a higher purpose in this new life she's made for herself. Number 14. RMS Titanic it wouldn't be a list of amazing sunken ships without talking about the Titanic. While this ship may need no introduction, I'm going to provide one anyway. The Titanic, the most famous ship for never making her destination, was the largest cruise ship of its time. The Titanic was built in Ireland at the Harland & Wolf shipyard. It was considered to be the most developed ship of that era. However, the Titanic, famously described as unsinkable, unfortunately sank after colliding against an iceberg on its maiden voyage from Southampton to New York City on April 14, 1912, in the North Atlantic Ocean. 1,517 people lost their lives in one of the biggest marine tragedies in history that cold night. After many unsuccessful expeditions, the wreck was finally located by a joint French-American expedition in 1985. Several artifacts and debris have been removed from the shipwreck and are displayed in the National Maritime Museum in England. And many schemes were proposed to raise the ship, but the fragile condition of the vessel prevented such plans. The 2001 UNESCO Convention now protects the wreck of the RMS Titanic, and it remains one of the most famous shipwrecks of all time. Number 13. RMS Empress of Ireland Canadian ocean liner RMS Empress of Ireland sank near the mouth of the St. Lawrence River on May 29, 1914. After colliding with Norwegian collier SS Storstad due to thick fog, killing 1,012 people, the vessel was en route from Quebec City to Liverpool with 1,057 passengers and a crew of 420 aboard when the ship went down in one of the worst disasters in Canadian maritime history, considering nearly everyone lost their lives in this incident. At present, the wreck of the Empress of Ireland lies in a shallow 130 feet of water, making her slightly more accessible than some of the deeper sunken ships. But when a ship goes down like this, lying in wait for decades, everything in her hull is fair game to divers and treasure hunters. Several divers have recovered valuables amongst the ship's remains, including silver bars, a brass bell, and a stern telemeter from the ship. Number 12. MS Estonia The Estonia ship casualty in the Baltic Sea is one of the biggest maritime incidents in recent history. The cruise ferry MS Estonia, built in the German shipyard Meyer Werft, was en route to Stockholm from the Estonian province of Tallinn when it sank on September 28, 1994. Over 800 people lost their lives in this horrifying incident, and most of the bodies were never recovered. The cause of the accident remains controversial, as there are many theories about the cause of the sinking. The most commonly known reason for the accident is said to be the rough weather conditions that the ship encountered. However, other sources tend to disregard this reason and will state that because of the ship's military involvement, bombs were planted by rival countries to destroy the ship. After the incident, there were demands from the relatives of the deceased to raise the vessel to give a land burial, and at the same time, there were discussions to raise the ship for a detailed inspection to know what caused the accident. However, the Swedish government decided to bury the vessel, and thousands of tons of pebbles were dropped on the site. 
and as per the Estonia Agreement in 1995, the burial site has been designated as a sea grave and prohibited the exploration of the wreckage, and the truth will likely remain a mystery to all but those that were there that day. Number 11. Iro Maru while the more well-known World War II ship graveyard is the Chuk Lagoon, Palau is also home to 60 wrecks of its own, perfect for the sightseeing diver as many are relatively close to the ocean's surface. Iromaru, which was nearly 470 feet long, sank in 1944 during what was known as Operation Desecrate One, a prep mission the U.S. Navy made before overtaking Papua New Guinea during the war in the Pacific. The ship is wrecked in the upright position at 120 feet below the surface at its deepest. Loads of fish and corals have covered the wreck and made it into a home, but there's also live ammunition strewn about the deck, so divers should use caution if they're heading down there to the lower parts. Actually, when you come down to those depths, perhaps it's best not to touch anything. Number 10. SS Andrea Doria on July 25, 1956, the world tuned in to an extraordinary yet tragic event. Broadcasted live to a stunned world, the stricken transatlantic liner SS Andrea Doria made her final plunge into the ocean. For the first time, the world watched the disaster unfold in real time. The loss of the ship would signal the end of the transatlantic passenger service. From then on, air travel would become the preferred method of transportation. The flagship of a defeated country, the Andrea Doria was Italy's phoenix from the ashes. Launched in 1951, the SS Andrea Doria was hailed as one of the safest vessels ever built. Small, at only 697 feet and a displacement of 29,000 tons, she was neither the largest nor the fastest vessel of her day. She was, however, the most luxurious. The first ever vessel to feature three outdoor swimming pools, she was adorned with over a million dollars worth of artwork and decor. But the ship had a number of design flaws, the worst of which was her habit of listing dangerously after any significant force hits the ship. A heavy fog rolled in on the night of July 25, 1956. The Andrea Doria, nearing the end of her voyage, was on approach to New York. Meanwhile, the light cruiser Stockholm was departing from New York. Misinterpretation of radar signals and the fog was a fateful recipe for disaster. The Stockholm struck the Andrea Doria amidship killing 57 people and tearing a huge hole in the side of the ship, and she sank 11 hours later. Her slow sinking allowed for virtually all her passengers and her crew to be saved. The wreck of the Andrea Doria lies in 160 feet of water, and to many scuba divers, the ship is hailed as the Mount Everest of diving. Hundreds of divers have explored the interior and have recovered artifacts from the wreck, including jewelry, china, statues, and even the ship's bells. The wreck's location has contributed to its rapid deterioration. Strong ocean currents continuously bombard the wreck. Over the last 50 years, the superstructure has all but collapsed and the hull has begun to split. While few lives were lost during the sinking, the Andrea Doria has developed a fatal reputation with divers. In the last 20 years, over 16 people have lost their lives diving at the wreck site. The most recent death happened in 2015. Number 9. The Bismarck the infamous German warship destroyed in a dramatic battle of air and sea marked the beginning of the end for battleships. Launched in 1939 in full violation of the Anglo-German naval agreement, Bismarck and her sister Tirpitz were the largest battleships ever built by Germany. She entered into a combined naval operation with the heavy cruiser Prince Eugen in May 1941 and quickly became a target for the Royal Navy. In a series of battles, the Bismarck was completely crippled by aircraft. The final battle involved three British ships against the crippled Bismarck. In just 30 minutes, the German ship was reduced to an inferno of steel and ash. The Bismarck was scuttled by her crew shortly after, and she sank. Her wreck was discovered by Dr. Robert Ballard in June of 1989. They found her standing upright in over 15,000 feet of water. This extreme depth has kept the ship in remarkable condition. Number 8. USS Arizona Bombed and sent to the bottom of Pearl Harbor during the Japanese attack of December 7, 1941, the USS Arizona was a Pennsylvania-class super dreadnought, launched in 1915. While she never fired her guns in anger, Arizona did serve the U.S. Navy for 26 years before sinking. During the First World War, she served primarily as a training ship, avoiding German U-boats altogether. Modernized in the 1920s and enjoying the role of flagship in the 1930s, Arizona had a successful career. 
During the attack, she was hit with a bomb that detonated in the powder magazine. This explosion was so powerful it actually lifted the ship out of the water before sending it to the bottom. Over 1,100 sailors were killed, two of her four main turrets were salvaged and reused, and her superstructure was removed and scrapped. The hull remains today where it sank. Over two quarts of oil a day still leak from the ship, so diving is strictly forbidden. Number 7. SS Thistlegorm A favorite amongst divers worldwide, the SS Thistlegorm is an exciting wreck in the Northern Red Sea, well known for its cargo of military supplies. Lying in around 100 feet of water, she offers intriguing swim-throughs and gloomy holds still packed with motorbikes, jeeps, and a shipment of Wellington boots. The Thistlegorm was bombed en route to Alexandria, Egypt in 1941, and the resulting explosion split the ship in half, spreading much of her cargo across the surrounding seabed. As such, exploring the outside of this 490-foot wreck is just as interesting as venturing inside. With great piles of ammunition, two steam engines, and anti-aircraft guns still in place, Heavy currents and persistent damage from dive boats have resulted in the steady disintegration of the Thistlegorm superstructure. However, hard and soft corals and some interesting life can still be spotted amongst her rusting framework. This is an awesome shipwreck suitable for all diving levels, offering a plethora of visitors a snapshot of wartime history. Number 6. RMS Lusitania the Lusitania was one of the fastest liners on the ocean and the direct rival of the Titanic. Launched in 1906, she was the Cunard Line's answer to the booming passenger trade of the transatlantic shipping lanes. Her size allowed for 50% greater passenger space, and until the Titanic and Olympic were built, she remained unchallenged in the market. Her four steam turbine engines produced an astonishing 76,000 horsepower, capable of driving the ship through water at 26.1 knots. In her eight years of service, she made 202 crossings from Liverpool to New York. But when World War I broke out, the Lusitania found herself in the enemy crosshairs and in 1915 was hit by a German torpedo off the coast of Ireland. The resulting explosion blew a gaping hole in the starboard side. She began to list dangerously, and while the order was given to abandon ship, the captain attempted a last-ditch effort to beach the vessel on shore. But in less than 20 minutes, the ship plunged beneath the waves, taking 1,198 of her 1,959 passengers and crew with her. The rest is quite literally history, and salvage attempts were made as early as the 1930s. A dive tunnel was proposed to be built over the wreck that would allow divers to access the ship relatively safely. Their goal was to salvage the purser's safe and any other items of value, but due to financial problems, this never happened. During World War II, the Lusitania was depth-charged several times for target practice, and fears that Nazi U-boats might use the wreck as a hiding spot. Today, the Lusitania lies on her side, draped in snagged fishing nets. It's almost completely collapsed into an unrecognizable mass of twisted steel. Number 5. USS Yorktown America's carrier casualty of the Battle of Midway, USS Yorktown was a flat-top lead ship of her class. Launched just before World War II, the Yorktown was originally stationed in the Atlantic. After Pearl Harbor, Yorktown transferred to the Pacific and began operations against Japan. After receiving serious damage during the Battle of the Coral Sea, hasty repairs were made and the ship joined the Battle of Midway. During the attack, three of the four Japanese carriers involved were sunk. The remaining launched an assault on Yorktown. Despite an effective scramble and counter-assault by Yorktown's planes, the ship took three direct hits by bombs. One struck the flight deck, blowing a hole ten feet across, and another pierced the flight deck and exploded down the funnel, disabling most of her boilers. The ship temporarily lost maneuvering ability and had barely enough power to maintain auxiliary systems. The third bomb pierced the starboard elevator shaft and caused fires deep below decks. One final Japanese torpedo sent the Yorktown down towards the ocean floor. In 1998, the same crew who discovered the Titanic uncovered the Yorktown wreck. Despite capsizing when she sank, the ship landed upright on the ocean floor at a depth of three miles, a mile deeper than the Titanic. But these depths have left the Yorktown in a surprisingly pristine condition. With no biological growth to be found, the old sunken carrier is expected to survive in the deep for centuries before deteriorating. Number 4. USS Hornet In January 2019, another Yorktown-class aircraft carrier, the last American aircraft carrier ever sunk in combat, was finally found nearly 17,000 feet below the surface. The USS Hornet was less than two years old when she was sunk by Japanese destroyers after the Battle of Santa Cruz Islands. 
a veteran of the Battles of Midway and the Solomon Islands, Hornet was attacked by several waves of Japanese dive bombers. She took three bombs to the deck. One damaged bomber turned Kamikaze to the control island and another to the bow. In 15 minutes, the carrier was crippled. Unable to land on her flaming, powerless deck, her planes were forced to either land on the nearby USS Enterprise or ditch in the ocean. While under tow from cruiser USS Northampton, crews raced to restore power. They nearly succeeded up until the Japanese attacked again, this time with torpedo planes. A single torpedo hit the carrier starboard side, permanently destroyed the electrical plant, and the order was given to abandon ship. The Americans attempted to scuttle the carrier, but after nine torpedoes, the ship failed to sink. She was left to the Japanese fleet, who finished her off. Like her sister carrier, the Yorktown, the three-mile depth of her resting place has kept Hornet in amazing condition. When she was surveyed, she was found upright and largely intact. Much of her battle damage remains clearly visible. The most notable artifact was an aircraft tug tractor sitting on its wheels in the hangar deck. Number 3. USS Lexington As one of America's first aircraft carriers, the USS Lexington was originally launched in 1925 as a battle cruiser, but was then retrofitted into an aircraft carrier in 1928. Together with her sister Saratoga, these early CVs helped the Navy refine carrier design and tactics. When Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, Lexington and the other carriers were out at sea and spared destruction. The subsequent loss of battleship power after the attack forced the Navy to rely on carrier offensives and fueled a rapid advance of carrier technology. This fundamentally changed naval warfare for good as battleships would ultimately be phased out in favor of aircraft assaults. The carrier served in multiple Pacific offensives, with her final battle happening in May 1942. Japanese forces attacked the American carrier, which took two bomb hits. An explosion, as the result of sparks hitting fuel vapors from her undamaged fuel tanks below decks, knocked out her damage control system and the aircraft refueling system. A second explosion jammed the forward aircraft elevator, started several fires in the hangar deck, and knocked out forward power. A third explosion knocked out the water pressure system and forced the total evacuation of all compartments below the waterline permanently disabling the ship, with the order to abandon ship given shortly after, and over 2,000 crewmen leaving with their lives. During the evacuation, several more explosions blew the flight deck apart, sending aircraft flying into the sea. Lexington's wreck was discovered in 2018 in 10,000 feet of water. She's in three pieces, the tip of the bow and stern breaking off the main hull as the ship sank. Number 2. HMS Erebus on September 9, 2014, Parks Canada announced the discovery of one of the two long-lost vessels of the fabled Franklin Expedition. She was positively identified as the HMS Erebus when her bronze bell was found and recovered. The HMS Terror and the HMS Erebus were hopelessly trapped by the ice in 1845 and were abandoned by Sir John Franklin and his men. This decision sealed their fate, and the men would spend the rest of their days wandering the Canadian Arctic before finally perishing from starvation and cold. The Terror and Erebus were bomb ships built by the British Navy in 1813 and 1826, respectively, and the Erebus had already successfully served on one Arctic expedition in 1841 and was refitted for Franklin's expedition four years later, and had eluded divers and historians for centuries, so finding this ship was a massive discovery. Number 1. HMS Terror Two years almost to the day after the discovery of the HMS Erebus, headlines around the world once again flashed the discovery of the other Franklin vessel, the HMS Terror. 31 miles from her running mate and approximately 80 feet of icy water, the Terror's condition is remarkable. Originally constructed as a bomb vessel for the British Royal Navy, the Terror fought against the United States in the War of 1812. Afterward, she would see several exploration expeditions until being assigned to Sir John Franklin in 1845. Like the Erebus, the Terror became locked in the ice flow and abandoned by the expedition. The discovery of the ship marks the end of a search that spans 140 years. She was found some 50 miles from where her ice-locked location was recorded. And interestingly enough, evidence was found on board suggesting that the ship was renamed after being abandoned. Perhaps some of Franklin's men returned to the ship and attempted once again to free her from the ice. In 2019, Parks Canada entered the ship for the very first time. What they saw inside stunned everyone. Perfectly preserved rooms, complete with furniture, pots, pans, bunks, and even the captain's deck. 
The condition of the wreck has opened the possibility of first-hand Franklin relics and information that could help shed light on the expedition's failure. I'll see you next time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.